Vam Deva ji, as an American Hindu, how do you view Hinduism, its meaning, its relevance for the entire world today? Uh, yes, it's very interesting for me because I find that so many Hindus cannot explain what Hinduism is, not even to their own children, in fact, even for themselves. Uh, and there are good reasons for this as well as bad reasons. The bad reason is not proper study of the tradition. The good reason is that the tradition is very vast and has much depth and many dimensions. So the first thing I would like to go through is kind of a synopsis or overview of certain important facts about Hinduism. Uh, even though they're very simple and easy to understand and common to find, most people don't know. And first of all is that Hinduism is the third largest religion in the world today. Only Christianity and Islam have uh, more followers. Uh, but even throughout history, Hinduism has always been, if not the most widely followed religion in the world, at least uh, one of them. So third largest of the world's religion even today. And this is very interesting because Hinduism, as you know, is the oldest religious tradition in the world. So the very fact that it has survived all these years and remains so large is important. And then Hinduism is the largest of the non-biblical traditions in the world. It's not rooted in the Bible like Islam and Christianity, or we say the Abrahamic traditions to be more uh, accurate. Hinduism is the largest of the Dharmic traditions, but also it is the largest of what we call indigenous, native, or what was also called in a negative way, pagan traditions, uh, traditions in which we have uh, very similar practices of honoring nature, use of images, sacred fires, sacred plants, uh, deities of uh, various sorts, uh, the native traditions, and also the Dharmic traditions as more explained uh, philosophically, yoga, meditation, uh, mantra, temple worship, and all these different practices. So in many ways, this makes Hinduism the most important and most influential tradition in the world. Now to put this in the modern context, Hinduism is the largest and the oldest of what we call the pluralistic traditions. Pluralism in the sense of recognizing that there are many paths to God or truth. There are many ways to look at reality. Divine has many names and forms. And what is honored is a pursuit of truth, not holding to a particular belief uh, only. So this puts Hinduism in a very different place than the Western traditions, the monotheistic traditions that have one God, one book, one savior, one path, and often a rejection of those who follow other paths, not an inclusion of them. Now in the modern world, we have moved into a pluralistic age in terms of language, race, in terms of culture, in terms of so many aspects of life. So a pluralistic approach to life is one that makes the greatest sense and allows us to integrate different truths uh, together. So in this respect, Hinduism provides us a vision of the future, a planetary and a cosmic vision. Hinduism defines itself as the Sanatana Dharma, which means eternal and universal tradition. It is not limited to a person, place, name, book, or theory. And it orients itself to the universal consciousness and the cosmic intelligence as its foundation, orientation, and goal. So this puts it on a not only a spiritual but a scientific plane. Uh, Hinduism has a similar view of the antiquity of the universe going back for billions of years, a view that there are many other worlds where there are living beings, intelligent life, and that the individual soul has many births and many worlds and many forms and many creatures. So much vaster view of human life, culture, religion, and spirituality. Now there is some debate, oh, is Hinduism a religion? Is it monotheistic? What is it? 
Hinduism is a vast tradition of spiritual and cultural knowledge, art, and practice. So it is not limited to the Western stereotype of religion as a monotheistic faith or belief system. And yet Hinduism is very vast. Hindus have more monks and more sadhus than any other religion in the world. They have more temples. They have more greater diversity of art forms than any other religion in the world. Hindu festivals. The Hindus have more pilgrimage than all the other religions in the world put together today. Kumbha Mela can have 20, 30, or 40 million people. We live in America where we have the largest Christian pilgrimage site. They get three or 400 people for a special event uh, once a year. Thousands and millions of Hindus are on pilgrimage from the Char Dham to Kanya Kumari to all the different centers, Sabri Malai. There are so many. And Hinduism has this great diversity. But behind all the diversity, there is a recognition of a unitary truth, a unitary self, a oneness of consciousness, and a oneness of being. There is an honoring not only of spiritual knowledge, but of all the art forms as paths of yoga or expressions, as tremendous way of opening the human creative spirit in all of its potentials. And so in the modern world, since the time of Swami Vivekananda, aspects of the yoga, aspects of the Hindu tradition as yoga, meditation, mantra, Ayurveda, and so forth, have been spreading worldwide and enriching people of very different cultural backgrounds and transforming people at the level of inner consciousness, not promoting hostility, not promoting uh, division, uh, helping each individual. So the Hindu view is of spiritual practice at an individual level taught by contemporary as well as ancient great teachers and gurus, an honoring of all spiritual practices, whether it's ritual, whether it's use of images, whether it's music and art, whether it's philosophy, whether it is uh, mathematics, whether it is science, whether it is even social action, uh, karma yoga, ahimsa, all these things. So it has a vastness which is reflecting a great richness and heritage that each person and each culture, each community can use and adapt in a way that is transforming and elevating to who they are, to what their potential is. In Hindu tradition, there's this great understanding of karma and rebirth. Even in America, a non-Hindu country, uh, for many years, they found out that at least one quarter of the American population accepts the idea of rebirth. We see how terms like karma, mantra, have entered into uh, global thought from the uh, Hindu tradition. So we must recognize that Hinduism is a religion, but it transcends religion as we know it, embracing the entire universe. It is a spiritual science and a way of knowledge. It includes yoga. Yoga is its way of practice. Uh, it includes the great cultural heritage uh, of India and all of its art forms. It embraces the whole of life. It sees everything as sacred, yet it allows the individual to be free to discover truth for himself or herself, which is the practice of sadhana or spiritual practice which is adapted individually, which is taught by a particular teacher. We have the great Hindu gurus traveling worldwide. Many have resided in different countries. Paramahansa Yogananda lived in America for several decades and brought the great uh, teachings there. So once we look at Hinduism in its proper and global perspective, its vastness of teaching, and its great ancient heritage, as well as its view for the future, then all these missionary Marxist colonial stereotypes and denigrations of Hinduism as backward, as primitive, as unscientific, as unhygienic, and all of that 
are regarded as misinterpretations. This is a vast tradition that has nourished the great civilization of India and areas around. At the same time, it has maintained an openness, a capacity for growth, and now it is undergoing a great renaissance with the diaspora of Hindus to countries throughout the world where they are taking a very active role in teaching as well as in the scientific and business communities. The flowering of all the Hindu-based teachings, yoga, Ayurveda, Vedanta, being adapted by individuals of all backgrounds, as we have said, and an awakening in India, which started with the Indian independence movement, uh, inspired by great gurus like Swami Vivekananda, Sri Aurobindo, Mahatma Gandhi, who always spoke of himself as a proud Hindu and called Hinduism the unrelenting pursuit of truth. So Hinduism has been the most misunderstood religion in the world because of vested interest against it on one hand, but also because of its vastness on the other. So we need to study this tradition and honor it, uh, note its diversity of teachings, but also understand its underlying unity, its adaptability at an individual level. And if we do this, this great heritage can help all humanity can help people of all backgrounds, can help us transform our idea of religion and embrace the entire universe. The Hindu thought through the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita teaches us that the entire universe dwells within our own hearts as our true self. And our true self is the same being that pervades the entire universe, that is present in all creatures. Once we come to that vision of unity consciousness, then miracles, magic, and transformation, and deep understanding and insight then become the way of life and culture for everyone. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha.